this I absolutely love this now I know there's a story with this but I have seen a picture of Tony Bettenhausen senior sitting in a red 33 at the brickyard so but I don't know that that's this car well Tony Tony senior drove the, the Jones and Maley car in 1958 um, and he finished fourth he led the race four times he spent too much time in the pits he kept passing people um, it's got an offy and 255 Offenhauser that's laying down in the car. Sideways? Sideways. Super cool. But it's not the car that Bettenhausen drove. No, Bettenhausen smashed that car up in 59 really, really bad. Mm -hmm. And um, Harry Turner bought it and he stood the engine up and made it look more like a Curtis. Um, and I had the original drawings of this car that Leo Goosen drew. And um, I reconstructed this car from the drawings. That's interesting. Wow. Um, you mentioned Leo Goosen. He was, wasn't he Fred Offenhauser's partner in the early days? Well, he was the draftsman for Miller also. And I didn't know that. And, and Myron Drake and Drake. Wow. He was there from the, he, he was a draftsman for Buick in like 1916 or something. And he went to work for, for Harry Miller. And he stayed there until the end, until 1980. Well, that is a beautiful machine. Now, what, I, I, I'm used to looking at like a, an A.J. Watson Roadster from this era. This is clearly not a Watson Roadster. I mean, what is it? What is the chassis? Well, the, the guy that built the chassis was Quinn Epperly. Who was it? Quinn Epperly. That's the name I was looking for. Epperly. Epperly. Yeah. Okay. So we often brag about the Watson Roadsters, but there were other Roadsters from that era. This would be one. Yes. Uh, Curtis built those Roadsters, and then there was several people. Uh, Ed Kuzma built some. Yep. Uh, there were like four or five other guys that Watson allowed to build his, I guess he he blessed them or something to build cars that, if they wanted to build one. Mm -hmm. But that would be an Epperly chassis? This is an Epperly chassis, but okay. it was designed by Goosen. I okay, mean, the, really? Leo Goosen designed it? Yeah, I've got the drawing. I'll show it to you. Let's okay, it. well that's Come interesting. On. You've got the drawing. Mm -hmm. Wow, I love it. I love this car. So I can, that front, I look down that front end, it looks like it goes forever. But I can't, I mean, the, the transmission is right next to my leg here. I mean, literally, inches away. Wouldn't my leg get super hot? Well, I think your leg is in the way. <laughs> well, I'm sure of that, but <laughs> didn't their legs get hot right next to transmissions that got burning hot? Well, I think things weren't all that comfortable in those cars. <laughs> Good. Yeah. I, I just, this is an Indianapolis 500 Epperly Roadster that ran in the late 50s. And I can't imagine sitting in this thing, sitting in this car for 500 miles, hoping you live through the experience. My God. I can't imagine doing this. I really can't. But they did. And it was such a cool, interesting era. I just missed the road, the front engine roadster era. I just, uh, when I came in, uh, as far back as I can remember, they were, they were rear engine cars, but I am, I wake up every day so disappointed that I didn't get to witness this era up close and personal firsthand, the front engine roadsters at the Brickyard, the prettiest race cars ever built.
I don't care, man. I'm gonna stand by that till the end of time. This is so cool. I think I could do this. I don't think so. <laughs> I'd take it for a lap myself, but I'm not gonna race 32 other guys at the brickyard for 500 miles, no way. Not doing it, but I love it. I really do. You have a fascinating collection. I mean, what are you gonna do with all this stuff? Well, that remains to be seen, I guess. Oh, that's a story yet to be told. I have a daughter. Yeah. She likes race cars. Well, that's a start. I have a wife that likes to sell them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to me, this looks like an A.J. Watson Roadster. Um, looking at the front end and all the way down through, uh, but I'm not sure. Well, what? it's one of those cars that is just like a Watson Roadster. It was built by, I believe it was built by Eddie Kuzma. Um, and I think it was built in 61 and ran at Indy with Bill Cheeseburg driving it. It was a Dean Van Lines car, I think. I'm not positive. It was a super modified when I got it and I tried to trace these things back. Sometimes it's kind of difficult. Um, it was, I kind of always liked the Roadsters after 64 when they had wider tires and yeah sm smaller diameter wheels sure so i did this car that, like that was registered in 64 it never it never was made a qualifying attempt though as the delta international movers car yeah and the reason that i did did it is that delta international movers car was because i wasn't sure if it was the 61 dean van lines car gotcha gotcha you know as a kid growing up with a USAC sprint car series, my, my stepdad had some uh, USAC sprint cars, and I was around the tour pretty much full time, late 60s, early 70s through 73. And during that era, I saw a lot of these cars that ran the USAC sprint car trail that were roadsters, roadsters. But I remember the roadsters being a much shorter wheelbase, and I'm not sure how that happened because I know a lot of these old Indy 500 roadsters became super modified or sprint cars in later life. How, how, but well, they looked shorter to me. Well, they did. Um, I think many of the super modifieds stayed with a 96 inch wheelbase, and they, they started, USAC started to let those cars run as sprint cars, and they beat the upright cars real bad. And at some point along the way, USAC made them shorten those cars to try to make them more equal with the upright. Uh, That's cars. how that happened. That's how those Indy Roadsters got to be shorter. But I think the, most of the cars, like at Oswego and Sandusky, I don't think they were they were still run as 96 inch wheelbase cars. Is that the wheelbase of a, of, of of a, a Watson, Watson Roadster, yes. 96 inches? Yes. Okay. A.J. Watson built this car um, I don't know, about 25 years ago, I guess, um, as a replica of, of a car that was a leader car car that had a four cam Ford in it for a couple of days in 1965. Um, Bobby Grimm was supposed to drive it. Um, Don Branson also was a driver for leader car that year. And Branson took a ride in it and it blew the engine up and they took it back home and didn't come back. Okay. Um, but it it has a four cam Ford in it. It was the only Roadster that ever had a four cam Ford. Most of these engines were offies, were, right? Most of the Roadsters were offies, but the four cam Fords were all in rear engine cars. Most of them Lotuses at the time. So that would be rare in that it's got the Ford motor and a front engine Roadster. So much history. So then these, cool. These engines, Ford sold sold this whole deal to A.J. Foyt, and then it was turbocharged, and that's what Foyt ran uh, in the 70s. Yeah, when you got into the rear engine revolution. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And he called, he, he changed the cam covers and called it a Foyt, but it was basically a four cam Ford. Got it. I'm not sure what I'm looking at. Offset, as well, it is. Well, this is a super modified. That's a super modified, okay. And essentially, this, beautiful. Is, this is the way that most of the Indy cars ended up it, until they got looking worse and worse and worse because they ra raced them every Friday night. Yeah. It's got a 427 Chevy in it, uh, leaned over about 20 degrees to the left. 
it's an eight inch offset car like an offy roadster was well i'm sure it was built by um wally muskowski intended to go to the speedway but i think it was probably at the end of the roadster days so the first that i know that it ran someplace was as a super modified so is this one of the first ever offset super modifieds could you say or well when, i think when we this, went in that direction well, i think this kind of all happened about the same time when the offy roadsters quit when they were out gunned at the speedway by the rear engine cars um, these cars weren't worth a lot of money and this the guys on the short tracks bought them up for like a couple thousand dollars and, and they still had another 10 years of life left got it that's a beautiful machine that is super cool now mm -hmm. i don't even have to guess who didn't drive that i guess <laughs> i know it uh, is a car that uh, um, exactly as aj foyt would have ran it but i know there's a backstory to it we don't have to get into all of it but it's a beautiful machine how about aj would like to have that it has a kind of a goofy looking engine in it it's well it's, it's an not, offy it's an offy but it's a little bit different but and but from you can't notice it but the the top of the block is raised up a little bit in okay the, in the the valve angle is 30 and a half degrees instead of 36 and it's a little bit different shaped inside there were two of these engines built it also has divided intake ports and it's got this injector that Hillborn made that's got eight butterflies instead of four. So it's kind of a, I had both of, I had both of these. I put the other engine in another car. But just for the record, Foyt did not drive this car. No. But it looks exactly like the one he did. Painted just the same. Beautiful. That's a champ car. That's a Watson Ward. It was built originally with a Chevy uh, in 1969. Uh, Don Nordhart drove it first. Um, Dana Carter drove it a lot. Wow. Um, but it had so it had a full cage on it. It had a, when you got it. Probably. It had a full cage on it when I got it. But the and it had a modern looking body on it. It was run as a Silver Crown car until 1991. Um, had kind of a wedge-shaped hood and stuff but the original body was with it and so it's it's all back together with its original parts just like it was when it was new it's beautiful i love it ken schrader drove it i think ken last. schrader drove this yes wow would it would it have had the 54 on it or no was it? it was orange when he drove it okay and it was belonged to a, a guy in like the st louis area so I, I think about hit that name. Uh, that that would make sense because Schrader's from St. Louis, so I, hence the connection there. I, I'll bet. Uh, so this car probably Schrader probably ran it at Springfield and DeCoin on yeah. the mild earths, and it's so cool. Schrader, I know it was painted different, but you remember this car? I'll bet he does. He doesn't forget much. The Trucian Special. What on earth is this? Well, it's a Miller. Miller, okay. Um, this is a car that my dad was building about the time that I came along. And it was never completely finished until about 1990. Uh, he started this thing in 47. And it was all there, um, except it wasn't painted. Uh, he built the frame and the suspension and uh, it's an independent front suspension. It's got a cross leaf in it. It's got parallel bars, torsion bars in the rear. Doc Shanebrook built the body. It has the first 220 engine that Miller built. It was sold to Shorty Cantlin and Bill White and ran at Indianapolis in 32, finished second. Uh, the motor did or the, the car did? The motor did the car the motor never, the okay. car never ran any place because it. the car never was it it was finished by my dad in can the, i see the motor 1990. so this motor finished second in the indy 500 and with what you said was shorty cantlin in it i think howdy wilcox was howdy in wilcox shorty, in shorty cantlin's car 
I gotcha. So would this have been the first Miller then? Well, it was not the first Miller, but it was the first 220, which is the forerunner of all the Offenhausers. And this is the first 220 Miller? Yes. Wow. Now there's a serious chunk of cool history. That's interesting. And my dad ran this engine his whole time of driving until even after the war. Was your, was your dad uh, Steve also? Steve, or? yes. Wow, that's neat. First 220 Miller. Precursor to the Offenhauser. Here, I'll give you a show. I always I like a, a good show. I need a stick, though. Oh, you need a stick for the show? Okay. Oh, a hood prop? Yeah. All right. Are you pumping up fuel? I'm pumping up fuel. Okay. Silver Crown Champ car. I, I know that look very well. What do we, what do we know about this piece? We ran this car until 1990 or 91. Um, it started his life out as uh, aristocrat's product car before I bought it. Um, and as that car, uh, Steve Kinzer drove it, and uh, Rich Vogler drove it. Kinzer, uh, I think Vogler won Ducoin in it, and. Kinsler won the four crown at Eldora. I, I, I was there that day. Um, yeah, in fact, Steve and I just did a series on Steve Kinsler, and he talked about uh, winning there. That They started from the back. Uh, I think it was a yellow number three then or yes. something. Uh -huh. And it wasn't a down tube car then, right? No, and actually, it wasn't a down tube car when we ran it either, but we were going to run it after 1990, and uh, I tried to stiffen the frame up a little bit with the down tubes, so, but it never ran with the down tubes. We never ran it after I did that. Okay, well. So I don't know if it helped it or hurt it. I'll bet, well, there, there you go, Steve Kinzer. That's the car you smoked them in at Eldora in the Four Crown Nationals back in the early 80s. I bet Steve Kinzer doesn't, doesn't even know what ever happened to that car, but uh, he knows now. That, that's fascinating. And I, I'm gonna just point out, because Steve Kinzer talked about this, um, I was there that day, and he started in the back of the champ car race, he started in the back of the sprint car race, and he smoked everybody, and he did it with about 30 to 40 slide jobs throughout both events. It was amazing, it pissed off USAC, USAC wasn't ready for that, it wasn't uh, appropriate behavior uh, back then, uh, but- You were he, supposed to be a gentleman. Well, <laughs> Uh, well, let me tell you, Steve Kinzer invented the slide job. <laughs> and then if it wasn't appropriate then, from that day forward, it became appropriate because everyone else started doing it. That's amazing. And that's that car. That's so cool you have that. Looking at this one, it looks like it's a in progress, in production. Is there a story with it? Well, this ended up as a super modified, ran at Oswego. But we think, well, we're pretty sure it was. it's a Watson probably the 58 Watson of uh, Jimmy Reese. It was a John Zink. Special. Jimmy Reese drove it in 58. Yes. In the 500. Yeah. We also think it was the car in 1960 that Troy Rutman drove, and it was run um, by Bobby Grimm in 61 and Lloyd Ruby in 62. Got it. Well, there's some cool history. Interesting names to go with that one. And you're restoring it for someone? I'm restoring it for somebody. Do you know how you're going to paint it? Like back to the original, whatever it was, or who knows? Whatever he we're, wants, we're, I we're guess. We're going to paint it back to whatever it was when we figured out what... <laughs> when you figure out exactly what it is? <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm buying all that. <laughs> I'm buying every bit of it. And you don't even have to tell me uh, uh, what this car is. I know exactly what that is. I saw that run as a kid at Sandusky Speedway, at Toledo Speedway. That's the Flintstone Flyer that Todd Gibson drove to so many wins, so many victories, championships. That's, that's a classic piece there. I saw it on 
on eBay and I think it was it was sold. Then it got on eBay again. I happened to see it on a Sunday afternoon. Back then on eBay there was telephone numbers so you could call somebody and I called the guy. What happened? I thought this car was gone and he said he sold it to somebody in Colorado and that guy picked it up and took it to Colorado and when he got it he didn't want it and he caused a big stink and the guy had to go get it, give him his money back. Really? At least he, and, he got the car and the money back. Yeah, and I said, well, you want me? It, it had a buy it now on it. And I said, well, I'll buy it. I it didn't have an engine in it, but the car was pretty much all there. Um, and I had this engine that was out of my other Silver Crown car, and I thought this would be a good place to put it. Sure. Has Todd's family, I know Todd has passed on now, but has his kids or anyone expressed an interest in it at all? I talked to Gene Lee mm -hmm. um, a couple months ago. and he Midget said he champion? Wanted, yeah, he said he wanted to come and look at it because he'd like to buy it. And I told oh. him he probably should because if he wanted it, it was his dad's. That, that carries a lot of weight with me. Yeah, oh God, as it should. The Flintstone Flyer. That is so cool. I can't imagine going 130 mile an hour in this thing. But they did, and and they do. I mean, you're right on the ground. I mean, for crying out loud, talk about talk about the seat of your pants. Wow. 700 horsepower go kart. Oh my gosh. So cool.